Hey everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls. I'm Arcade and today's challenge is not for the faint of heart, but rather for the sadistic and self-torturous. Luckily for you guys, I happen to be both. Like the title says, today we're going to be trying to beat Dark Souls without attacking. The rules are simple. We cannot attack, so no weapons or spells of any kind are allowed. In addition, any projectiles that deal damage are also not allowed. Now then, let's begin. We make a new character and start off the game with the Armor of Thorns, which we totally got without cheating. Mmm, yep, totally legit. And for those who don't know, the Armor of Thorns is an armor set that deals damage to anyone if you kick, fall, or roll into them. However, it's a really small amount of damage. No, seriously, it's, it's a really small amount of damage. But since it's not an attack, it's fair game. Which is good because for this challenge, we're a pacifist. We don't believe in violence. Now then, after painfully impaling the Asylum Demon, repeatedly, with the jagged spikes covering our body, we leave the Undead Asylum and get to Firelink. Textbook pacifist. We then briskly go past the Undead Berg and get to Taurus Demon. And if you're wondering, no, I am not in fact getting smacked by Taurus Demon, his great axe is simply moving me across the arena. But with a few more rolls, we beat him. Great! Now with him defeated, we can proceed to make our way to the lower part of Undead Berg. We head to the Firelink shortcut and meet the female Undead Merchant, who is going to be selling Dung Pies. And while we can't use any projectiles that deal damage, Dung Pies don't deal any damage, but they do inflict Toxic, which is going to be really useful later on. So now that we bought enough Dung Pies, we head upstairs to challenge the Bell Gargoyles. Ow! Whatever. Bet you won't do it again. Okay, so the strategy for this was Toxic the first Gargoyle and then just stall the fight out until it becomes a 1v1 again. Because as we all know, a pacifist is just another word for... A once the first gargoyle has been defeated, the fight is pretty much over. I don't even bother using dung pies and instead heavy roll my way to victory. Having beaten the gargoyles, we ring the first bell of awakening. Great! One down, one to go. But before we head to Quelag, we decide to head to Darkroot and join Alvina's Covenant. But thou must heed the golden rule. The clan is thine own family, to thine kingdom forever stay true. Dares not in any attempt to double cross. Have no doubt such wretchedness never will we tolerate. Huh. What about like one guy? Never. But but just like never will we tolerate. Right, well, I mean I've been in the clan for two whole minutes, but they already feel like family. I'm sure I would never harm them in any way. On a totally unrelated note, I found this cool ring. But once the clan found out, they all attacked me for some reason. Hey, yo, Garfield, the fuck happened to Never Will We Tolerate? I hate Mondays. Wait, what the fuck? We also decided to fight Havel, since this ring is going to allow us to fast roll, which will make fighting bosses a lot easier. Now, with all that, we head to Blighttown to fight Quelag, who can, in fact, get toxic. It just takes a while. Once she's toxic, we circle around her to speed this fight up and eventually defeat her. With her out of the way, we ring the second bell of awakening and head to Sen's fortress, where we take care of the giant throwing bombs at us. We then greet the Iron Golem, who unfortunately cannot be toxic, so we have to do this the hard way. Which takes a while, but it's not that bad. It's just the Iron Golem. He's not difficult. He's just a bastard. You're a bastard. He literally just backslapped me across the map. Whatever, let's go again. I'm not falling for it a second time. It happened again. How are you? Are you kidding me? Okay, well, we finally beat the Iron Golem. And uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, it took 17 minutes. But with the Iron Golem defeated, we can backflip into the glowing ring and head to the city of Anor Londo. We go to the high ledges and... Oh my god, I can't, I can't believe that happened. Okay, so, so we then lure another knife thrower and... <laughs> he does the same thing. Bro, what an idiot. Who does that? <laughs> you gotta be so dumb for that too. 
you know it can happen to anyone. So we eventually get past the high ledges and onto the archers. Hello sir, I'm a pacifist. I believe that means you have to let me pass. Or not. Anyway, after getting past the archers, we get to the second bonfire and make our way to Ornstein and Smaug. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Instead of fighting, why don't we just become friends? Oh my god, it worked. They accepted me as one of their own. Which is great and all, but uh... Fortunately, I still gotta do this challenge. So uh... Yeah... Phase 2 is back to business like usual. Luckily, Smoke has like the worst toxic resistance in the game, and it makes this whole ordeal pretty easy. With them defeated, we head upstairs, get the Lord Vessel, and break the seal. Now that we've broken the seal, we go right into the Duke's archives, get lost for 30 minutes as it's impossible to remember the right path, and eventually stumble into our first Lord. Seath. Unfortunately, all of the four lords are immune to toxic, so this is gonna take a while. Luckily, Seath's not really hard and his moves are pretty easy to avoid. Well, except his tail slams, which is the only move that ever hit me. Unfortunately for me, Seath must have heard me talking trash because in this attempt, I got stuck in the wall and died. And while I may sound calm now, when that happened, I'm pretty sure I popped several blood vessels, considered meditation, and drank herbal tea. Nevertheless, with Seath defeated, we go down to fight the Ceaseless Discharge, who luckily for us is incredibly weak to rolling. With the Lava Lake drawing up, we head to the Demon Fire Sage, who gave us more trouble than I will ever admit, although we beat him first try. Damn, I don't know why everyone is always trying to kill me. I'm just a friendly pacifist. I wish everyone was like my boy, the centipede demon. I mean, just look at this guy. He's so happy. He's always trying to give me high fives. It's, it's, it's very uplifting. Oh, someone wants a hug. All right, come here, big guy. Uh, center bro? Where'd you go? Ah, no matter. Probably had to take care of something. So we make our way past Lost Isolith and get to the Bed of Chaos. We destroy the first two bugs and then take the mandatory death which is bound to happen every run. Now then we head back and finish off the fight. With the Bed of Chaos defeated, it's time to go to everyone's favorite, the Catacombs. Yeah! Woo! Catacombs! Not gonna lie, it actually wasn't that bad this time. I think I'm getting better. I think I'm getting worse. No matter, eventually we get to Pinwheel, and I'm not gonna lie, he surprised me. Not because he was difficult, but because he actually has attacks. Up to this point, I did not know he could do that. We make our way deeper into the catacombs until we get to Nito, who is absolutely getting carried by his three skeletons during this fight. This fight is tedious, takes a long time, and makes you want to rip your hair out. But if there's one saving grace, it's that the skeletons are not immune to Nito's attacks. A decision by the developers that I am very grateful for. With Nito defeated, we're almost done with this challenge. So we head to Dark Rule and fight Sif. After giving him the old toxic treatment, we stay under him for most of the fight and keep rolling until we beat him. After getting the Covenant of Artorias, we head to New Londo. And, uh, I gotta be honest. Ladies, gentlemen, my fellow gamers, the next boss is the four virgins. Uh, I, I mean the four... No, yeah, virgins. Because if you need four people to gang up on you to win, there's no way I'm calling you a king. Oh, and, by the way, if by some sheer stroke of luck, you manage to beat one and think, Oh, whew, now I only gotta worry about three? Nope. You're wrong, because eventually a fourth one will spawn again. As if to say, I know you thought your dick couldn't get more flaccid, 
but here I am to prove you wrong. So after four hours of dying, running back, and then dying again, I eventually cracked. And yeah, I know I could have just wrong work to Gwen, but I wanted to be more honorable. I regret it immediately. But finally, with them defeated, we make our way to Gwen, who is pretty strong. He is unrelenting, leaves no room to heal, and has a lot of health. After losing to him a few times, I knew I had to change my strategy. So for the first time in this challenge, I removed my armor of thorns and equipped Havel's armor for maximum defense. I then equip a shield and begin parrying him, while following it up with a dunk pie. Because you actually can toxic Gwen, it just takes about 30 pies consistently. After he is toxic, it becomes a battle of endurance, as I desperately dodge all of his attacks for 10 minutes, until the toxic effect wears off. Since he is so low, I just rapidly equip the Helmet of Thorns and finish him off that way, since I was afraid he would beat me as I was changing armors. But yeah, we did it! Take that, Gwen! You just lost to pacifism, non-violence, and most of all, poison. Like, a lot of poison. With that being said, we have officially beaten Dark Souls without attacking. The hardest boss were probably Nito, Gwen, and... Yeah, that one.